Hello everyone, Tazar2 here, and welcome back to the Lads Podcast. This is episode 13. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we made it. Double digits. Wow. <laughs> We're just going to keep saying this every time we start a new... Every time. Every time we start a new episode Wait. in the double digits. I, I meant to say uh, we finally hit the teens, but um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we did. We hit the we hit the we teens. We are uh, we're middle schoolers now. Wow, I am thirteen, and this is deep. <laughs> I mean, I mean, middle school for me. I don't know about you, but it's where where it's where I met a lot of friends with similar interests. Like just kind of, yeah, kind of fitting too. fitting in to the tune of being a geek. <laughs> yeah, middle just... school is probably where I um gained a lot of that uh fitting in stuff because that's where I my interests really changed a lot in like sixth grade. Right, and, and I think that was the mainly, whole that becoming was mainly... mature thing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure had mm -hmm. something to do with it. <laughs> I doubt I was very mature back then, but I mean, no, but like I'm talking about that period is very, yeah, yeah. very much like getting mature. Yeah, it's it's things. making progress towards that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, in episode thirteen, this is actually the second time we recorded episode thirteen because <laughs> I messed it up. Yeah, we had a great recording last time, but uh, yeah, it didn't it was quite like record properly. Recording, but on this new computer, I've there's no like I don't have my settings already set up, so I was like, okay, click this button, click this button. Okay, I'm ready. Hit record, and I forgot to click another button. I know that's not very descriptive, but that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this is the second time we're doing this. Yeah, that's why my delivery at the beginning when we said, "Yay, we hit double digits," was a bit dry because I gave the same thing last time. Yeah, it was. It was, it was pretty much yeah. the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much beat and beat on, beat word for word. Yeah, beat for beat, word for word. Word for beat. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the term? I don't know. I don't anyway, know. <laughs> carrying on. Uh, speaking of new computer. It works for the most part, but if you watch my stream on, it would be yesterday, which is uh, the 10th. Uh, mm -hmm. It was kind of freezing and crashing and stuff, and that kind of sucked because that was my $50 incentive of uh, doing the B-tubing thing. Mm -hmm. So I did some investigating today and found out that multiple things. First of all, it is extensively overheating. So Ooh. so much so that that when that when I turn on the computer and, and it, so the design of the card normally most cards what they do is they have a good powerful fan to dissipate heat off of the card throw heat off of the card and also to assist in that they have a heat sink this card has no heat sink and it has a ten millimeter fan which is small. Oh. It's like the diameter of the fan, 10 millimeters. Yeah. It's small. So, and it's running at 8 gigabytes, which isn't, it, it's pretty much the top of what you can get, which is, uh, I'm talking about how much memory capacity your mm -hmm. graphics card has. Like, that's as much as you need on most uh, modern games and for streaming purposes. You need 8 gigs. Now, they did recently release a card that's 12 gigs, and that is completely overkill. <laughs> <laughs> but That is quite a lot. <laughs> no matter. I mean, you can also get cards that are uh, 32. So, And that's like the really tippy-top, high-end, most expensive card in the world that does the best things. You get 32 <laughs> gigabytes of video memory. And somebody God. said... That uh, I don't know how true this is because I just saw it on the internet, but somebody mm -hmm. said that with 32 gigs of video memory, you could render the entire United States in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Wow. And this is the new Microsoft Flight Simulator, not the old 2012 version. 
<laughs> so, yeah, 32 gigs of video memory yeah. is a lot. That's yeah, that's that's a bunch. <laughs> Just give you some perspective on what we're dealing with here. So I have this teeny tiny fan with no heat sink and this card that can do massive amounts of processing. So it overheats quite a bit. On top of that, there's this feature called Radeon Replay, uh, which is kind of like uh, Shadow Play in which it records the last 30 seconds of so or so of whatever you just did. So I said, that's a great feature. You know, you know, I can record some bangers, like, mm. you know, just banger matches where I just get all the kills. But when I was investigating, it turns out that that feature alone is using 70% of the GPU's utilization. <laughs> 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 so it's... So it's getting hot, getting hot, getting hot because the fan's not nearly not powerful enough to dissipate the heat. And uh, yeah, so it's just getting hot, very hot. Very, the heat is big. Very hot, somewhere around uh, and then somewhere very where hot. it hits uh, mm -hmm. around eighty degrees Celsius is when it shuts off. It can't handle it anymore. <laughs> 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 so, and when you turn it back on, that 10 millimeter fan, it's not powerful enough. It The heat doesn't go away. You got to turn off the computer, let it sit until it cools back down by itself. Just by, you know, thermal, mm -hmm. what's it called? Thermal equilibrium. Uh, hot, that's thing, the one. hot things go to the cold things. So just cooling off like that, mm -hmm. which makes my room hotter. It makes it makes my room hotter. Uh, it's it's not good to run your things at high heat like that because it kills it. Mm -hmm. So I invested in a GPU cooler, and the and this GPU cooler has two ninety millimeter fans. So okay, that's a lot better. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cool it off. It's going to keep it nice and breezy. And we'll be here tomorrow. That's the best part. Oh, good. Because that Amazon's great. amazing. <laughs> uh, when my, my dad actually tracked it down for me because he heard about this. And he was like, I know computers. I got this. And he sent me that. And, and I'm like, okay. So I, so I look at it. And I'm like considering buying it. And I go, let's look. At it. This was on Newegg. And it was $35 and ships to six darn days. I was like, that's pretty good for electronic, but let's check Amazon. On Amazon, it's $20 and we'll get here tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better. So that's a lot better. I was like, okay. So we pick it up. It'll get here tomorrow. I'll install it. We'll probably get here like end of class or something. And yeah, quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll be able to do things with the cart now. And therefore, we'll have less thermal throttling, yet less usage time due, due to the... Uh, or I'll have more usage capacity because of the the uh, replay, whatever you call it, not being there. Mm -hmm. um, so all my problems will be solved, and that'll be the computer build complete. Nice. Which is... Which is kind of disappointing because I didn't get the card I wanted. Like, even though that card's beefy, it's not the card I wanted. Because the card I wanted is a gaming card. This is a workstation card. So it doesn't have any of the fancy gaming features. But the hardware is there. But the best thing about computers like these is that they're upgradable. So hopefully later on down the road, I can get something great. That. That'd be nice. Yeah, something very nice. I won't have mm -hmm. to spend as much money as I did buying the whole rig. Yeah. <laughs> Tenth gen upgrade's gonna be a nightmare though, because I'll have to get all new parts, with the exception of the cooler. I, I would basically start from scratch, and the case, wow. I guess. So, yeah. Anyway, 
now that I've spent 10 minutes talking about things that probably went over many people's heads, probably even went yourself, over my head. probably even yourself, <laughs> yep. Jerry. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> is, let's, let's I, was just, I just kind of sat here nodding along like, yes, I know these words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. So some very exciting things have been happening in relation to the channel. Um, the payday video popped off the, uh, the one where we dressed up as Joe, Joe Biden and stole an election. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, that wasn't hyperbole. I, we, we literally did that. Yeah, it and happened. Go it, watch it. <laughs> it happened. It, it, and it popped off like in comparison to my other videos i believe it's the fastest growing video on the channel but it's not the one with the most views because the one with the most views is like multiple years old but it's getting up there it's growing so payday video popped off channel's looking good if i can keep this momentum going hopefully i can do something with this channel actually grow it speaking of growth or not growth, uh, doing something, I guess. I participated in an Extra Life Jeopardy event, which was a quiz, well, quiz event. It was this quiz show with uh, another person from Extra Life called Ray Bello. And he, and he gave us these quiz questions. It was in a Jeopardy format. And we won chat and me so you guys and i we won and the prize for that was 50 dollars to the hospital so as an incentive i've recently done these streams both the choose a game stream so chat got to pick the game we played apex legends and fall new vegas because there was a tie <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it was it, it was fun i liked that stream my PC actually stayed on for that stream. Uh, oh, that's good. But unfortunately, the $50 incentive, which was cha a challenge, and the Discord server came up with this one, VTubing. It did not stay on for that. So once we get this cooler, uh, we'll probably end up doing a repeat of that one hey nice because i don't feel good just leaving it like that you know next next stream or whatever mm -hmm. or maybe i'll do maybe i'll do just a normal stream before that and once we know that works and it doesn't break i'll do uh the 50 dollar incentive stream uh very unfortunate how that happened yeah But yeah, very fun. Yeah, very yeah. I'm a, I'm. Are you made some good amount of money? It's pretty good. It's good I'm, a, I'm excited to what is to come out of that. I'm also just excited to see uh, just people having fun. I want to have fun with this channel. You know, not make it feel like an endless grind, and having yeah. to fit it between school work quite stressful so hopefully i can kind of make this a decompression zone very chill where we just do some I mean, goofy nice. stuff and it'll be fun we want a nice relaxed vibe to this channel i do like vibe i do like chill vibe, vibe good chill vibe we do enjoy Lo that lo-fi hip-hop beats chill <laughs> if we don't already have background music in our in our videos we should immediately make them all lo-fi <laughs> I do have some videos with background music, and my streams usually have lo-fi. If I'm not, that's pretty good. If we're not doing something else, with like, you know, yeah, happy. Mm. Yeah, it'd be like it do. Sometimes the music just doesn't work with the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in other news, uh, you know, some things. Well, how how's your life? How's your life, Jerry? Uh, it was good. I was able to go to uh, in-person school today. That was fun. Ooh. Um, 
I got a lot of work done in there on my uh, animation project. By a lot of work, I mean a bit. But um, the by weather has been work, nice. I yeah. mean that. I I, by a lot of work, I mean enough to not be behind as much. That's oh, what I mean. You actually did do work. Yeah. Oh. I did do work. Yes. Well. It was it was a good work. It was it was a good a good heckin' job even. That's more than what I did. Okay, I'm kidding. It was I I, <laughs> I do things. Just we all do things. Yeah. <laughs> begrudgingly. <laughs> yeah. The most annoying class, I think, in my opinion, is English. And I I can definitely agree. English is a fine class. It's just Whenever I look at English work, I'm like, I already mm -hmm. did this. I did yeah, this three most, years ago. It's the it's same like, work there I was are doing my freshman classes. year. Yeah, there are certain classes we no, are no longer required to take. Like the, um, I don't think you're required to take a science class if you already passed and stuff. I don't see why we still need to take English. What right. else is there to go over? <laughs> yeah, you read the words good. You write the words good. Yeah, I do have the good reading this. I do know the preposition phrase thingies. Uh, I, like, there's nothing else to do. It's just review at this point. That's all English has become. Yeah, and I don't say I dislike writing. I mean, I like No, writing. I certainly don't. I actually, mm -hmm. I write a lot. You know, scripts yeah. and, and uh, just emails. You know, emails. I write good. I write goodly. <laughs> you have the good grammar skill. But at the at the same time, like, you know, I'm writing all the time. I say writing, but what I really mean is typing. Because mm -hmm. that's what this world is. But yep. I have the composition skills. I, I guess it's for the people who don't. Who are going into the working yep. course and are saying, mm -hmm. I'm not very good at writing. Because I've seen some bad writers. Mm. <laughs> like... Not everyone's a great writer, and some people get stuck sometimes. But I like writing enough that I can actually get through that class, but something mm -hmm. I can't stand is Shakespeare. Because Shakespeare isn't about writing. It's about reading. <laughs> and I, I mean, I like reading, you know, but I like reading things that are entertaining. I mean, I don't want to say Shakespeare isn't entertaining, but yeah, I was about to say, I've read a few it's Shakespeare not, it's uh, not at stories all that were modernized. It's not the, our modernized form of entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's very different. Yeah. And for some the reason... The styles I, and things are antiquated. Yeah, for some reason it feels like uh, a bit boring. It's more boring than... It's harder to relate to characters that don't talk in modern English. Right. Yeah, it's hard. it's hard to relate to those characters when we... Mm -hmm. have to translate them. And it's With... like some of their issues aren't even like relevant anymore. Like um the issue of Macbeth, I don't think that story has any l real like significant like relevance really. It's like like I don't think any of us will like face those sorts of issues. Yeah, that's more of like a I, I guess it's more of a grander scale than what we face in every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like everything back then was harrowing because you had to fight to survive, almost. <laughs> everything was just a struggle to survive, and that's not the way yeah. it is now. They had to walk uphill 50 miles to school every day. Yeah, something like that. We don't do that now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just don't like Shakespeare. <laughs> is is what I'm saying, and I feel but like a lot, of, like a lot of high school of like, high, high yeah. schoolers can agree with me when I say that. I was about to say the opposite and say I bet a bunch of like English uh, studying people, oh, English, probably like, like English majors, are just like mm. the, yeah, English majors are just in the comments raging right they got, now. They, like, got, you they, got their, they got their pitchforks. <laughs> oh, like, they're ready to burn you at the stake. Yeah, it's I I can I do I do read. I do read the books. And there are some like older books that I like reading, but not that old. <laughs> like I enjoy reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I actually got actually got it right here. I picked it up actually a while ago, which doesn't 
really prove my point that often, but I'm starting to read it more. You know, uh, <laughs> like it is very like it. It's an older reading, and but the the cool thing about this is that it's in modern English. <laughs> yeah, you can understand what is being said. The thing is, sometimes you can't because it's a lot of local knowledge. It it's a lot of the things where it's like uh Sherlock he he observes uh certain things that it's like oh it's obviously like this and you're trying to figure it out in your head like why is that but you weren't alive during Sherlock's time so you don't know these things as well as he does so it does make your mysterious mind feel kind of upset because it's like <laughs> Sherlock's call, calling you a simpleton pretty much. And I don't know, I guess that's the beauty of the book where, where Sherlock is just like, he's got this massive ego, <laughs> you know? Yeah, he does. <laughs> but it's in modern English. <laughs> yeah. At least the words make sense is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, like, I can't say I've never read something like this, but it's very rare that you read a book, and it's not that you you don't relate to the main character. You're at odds with the main character. You're angry at the main character. <laughs> you are angry at the main character. I've had a few books like that. I've read a few. <laughs> yeah, but it's not that often where it's like the main character insults you pretty much. <laughs> That gave me an idea for a book where it's like the main character is actively insulting the reader in oh, like third just person, breaking the like, fourth wall. Just yes, breaking the fourth wall just to call the, the reader character. an idiot. Yeah. I want to write a story like that. Thank you for that idea. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I do have a creative writing class, so I might use that one of these days. All right, do it. I would love to see the product. Uh, I don't know what I'm what I do. I mean, I am working on a like a little novella. Where it's just like uh it's like the sci fi thing. It's pretty cool. Oh cool. Uh I would say you should read it, but it's nowhere near done. Alright. When it is done, I would like to read it. It's probably gonna be one of those things where it's like, oh I better transfer this before school deletes everything that I own. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't do it. And it'll just go away. I'll be like, No. Aww. <laughs> well let's hope I pull it off before then. <laughs> That would be nice. <laughs> Gotta save it to my computer and install Word. Hey, I, I, I have a disk of Word. It's Word 2007. But what you can do with Windows is Windows is the master at backwards compatibility. So you can do this thing where it's just like you can. I I think you can upgrade it up to Windows 2015 edition, which is the modern file format. So it should be supported anywhere. I feel like I keep getting off track, but but then I realize, wait, this isn't. That's kind of what this podcast, podcast is about. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what we do here. This isn't a topical show. No, I mean we have topics, but we, we do oh have well. them. There are some things that I want to hit. I I can drive now. I feel like that's pretty cool. That is a pretty big accomplishment, I would say. Uh, yesterday I drove up to local park and walked it was pretty cool i like being outside and yeah see i went on a walk today but i didn't drive there because it was just my backyard yeah yeah it was a nice walk though the weather has been really nice recently yes I hope it stays it was... that way, but I was looking at the weather. I know it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Today was nearly 70. I checked once, and it, I think it was 70. It was. It was quite, it was quite toasty. I, I didn't have the time to go, go out, unfortunately. I did stand outside for a couple of minutes, mm. but I didn't have time to like really enjoy it. The trade school I go to allows us to um, sometimes occasionally eat outside, so we did that today, and that was very nice. That is wonderful. That is quite You know, wonderful. we do have that at our home school, but it's scuffed. It's like sometimes <laughs> they just won't let you outside for random reasons. Mm -hmm. 
I forgot that we had no, that option. Not even, a, not a even specific ago. reasons. Also, there's a limited capacity, and mm. also it's like this little concrete pad, so it's just it's either really cold in the shade or as hot as blazes on on and like I do when, believe that's when also, the sun is show, is showing. I also believe that's where they like dump all their trash and such. Like there's a dumpster really close by. Yeah, there's a dumpster close by, so you can smell that. It's not yeah. high quality. It's not it's not a great mm -hmm. seating location. So most people what they do is when people go out, you invade their spot if it's closer to the door so you can get the fresh breeze. <laughs> <laughs> that is the optimal strat. Yes. <laughs> At least I did that. That's what I did. That's big brain. That is very big brain. Uh yeah. It 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 was on those days where we I wasn't sitting with you guys playing magic. I was doing uh I was sitting with uh the gang from the my Chinese class. Mm. And that's where we sat. We sat near the door where they had the outdoor eating. But we didn't actually mm -hmm. do the outdoor eating. <laughs> Because it's, it's bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I ever did it at our homeschool. And today was my first time eating lunch outside at my trade school. But it was it was nice. It was really windy, and I didn't have sunglasses, and the sun was really bright. So that was a bit, you know, unfortunate. But it was still a really nice time out there. Yeah. Driving's going to open up a lot of doors for me. I just like being outside. Mm -hmm. And I don't – I haven't done it in a while because COVID. And not being able to yeah. drive. And I was like, hey, can we do this? And my mom's like, that's a great idea. We should do that. And then my siblings are either like, no, or I am I have to do this thing. So, yeah. Now I can just do it myself, which is great. That is indeed quite the auger. So, yeah. There's that. Yeah. Um... There was actually this concept, speaking of school, on mm -hmm. Tuesday that I discussed with a teacher, and we did discuss this on the botched cast. Botched the, cast. The deleted archived episodes. But we'll say it for you guys now. What? So there's this, uh, or not what, there's this concept of psychology called intrusive thoughts. And what it is, it's the, you know, there's like dark thoughts where it's like, I could do this. Like, I could I never jump would. off this I, bridge I, right now. Yeah, I never would, but I could do this. Mm -hmm. I could plunge this knife directly into my throat, but I won't. And apparently, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm looking at my knife right now. It's, it's, a, you said intrusive <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> and you just started thinking about it. Okay. No, that's that's one I've had before. I was like, I saw my knife, and I was like, you know what? That could go in my throat, but I won't. <laughs> you know what? It fits here. It does. I mean, I could make an opening. It would fit. It would fit. <laughs> it would fit, but I would not enjoy that. That would give me the ouch feeling. Yeah, but mm. you could do it, right? I could, but I but I would really like to not do that. I'd I'd like to do the opposite and just keep it there. And just and only it. use it for no, no, and, and only use it to open tape or no, something like only that. Only open tape. Yeah, like I used to only like un, like cut something open. Yes, that isn't me. Yeah. To be specific, cut something I open cut up that something isn't my that throat. isn't me. <laughs> like a box or uh, yeah, or something a box, like that. something mundane mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So, apparently, the reason we do this is because. Our brains are wired to think of the bad things first. <laughs> like, what could possibly go wrong about this? Because it makes sense, you know. Our brains mm -hmm. are instinctively, primitively wired to the what could go wrong. I feel like that makes sense. So it sense. can avoid that thing. So it can yeah. be like, okay, let's not do that. Let's not do this thing. Yeah, that, make, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So... I you learned want, about that. You want to be Tuesday. aware of the things. Yeah. You want to be aware of the things that you don't want to do before you're unaware of them, I guess. Okay. I had a point there. Other things that happened recently. 
there was a merger between Xbox and Bethesda. So Xbox, Microsoft owned gaming company, you know, makes the Xbox. In case you didn't know, they make the Xbox. They they do that. And Bethesda, yeah, they make they have four studios under their umbrella and yeah, it was sort of surprising when this came out that they were doing this because like it's not like Bethesda was like failing and looking to sell. But yeah, it was like what was the figure 3 billion? I have no idea. I haven't seen this was yet. It, was it 3 trillion? I think it's two it, that that 3 billion sounds so It's old. a large sum of money that has a 3 in it. Yes. <laughs> uh Bethesda merger price. This is why we have Google. Yes, Google is our friend. Seven point five billion. It wasn't even a three. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, that's a lot. That's a big amount of money right there. So they have four studios under their umbrella. Umbrella, you know, seven point five billion, not a small chunk of change. But yeah. I feel like the strategy here is, you know, the and I was kind of confirmed about this. You know, the Xbox Game Pass. Yes. You know, subscription service that can, you know, you can play free games or you get all these games for free mm-hmm. and so in order to make that more appealing than it already is because it's not like it's expensive like the game pass i believe is 15 dollars a month and you get a I ton think so, of yeah. games out of it you can even like even if you don't own an xbox system it's still worth buying the game pass because you can play some of these games that they have on pc so if you have a PC and you're like, oh, Xbox Game Pass? No, that's for console. Wrong. You can play it's on not. PC. And you can just do it right off the Windows Store. So if you have a PC, you can just download it. And there it is. And there. You play Bam. it. And it's great. Um, the only thing is you don't own these games. Like, once your subscription ends, you can't play them. So, you know, that, that makes sense because otherwise people would just that have a lot of money can just, which I don't even know why you would do this, but if they weren't protected by the subscription, you could just download all the games to a server and distribute them and just make all the games under the Xbox that came into the Xbox game pass free anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So right. Subscription service. You get to play all these games, games come in and out. Uh, but the thing about this Xbox Bethesda merger is they can actually take these games and uh, take a bunch of Bethesda titles and put them under Game Pass. Which would make sense, right? You know, Bethesda, mm-hmm. big studio, uh, very makes a ton of popular games. You know, the Fallout series, Skyrim, mm-hmm. uh, like all the Elder Scrolls series, uh, Prey, you're talking about, uh, uh, what's it called? I can't remember. Uh, the one where you're an assassin. Uh... Assassin's Creed? No, not Assassin's Creed. That's Ubisoft. Oh. Uh, Devotion? No. Dishonored. I don't know. The only real assassin Dishonored. game I knew. Would... Okay, yeah, I knew <laughs> that one. But... Dishonored. <laughs> gotcha. So, you know, games like Dishonored on Game Pass. All in Game Pass. So... That would be the ideal thing, right? All these are like bangers. They're good games. You know. Some say even like like you go to Steam charts and they're on there. And they're like I, I believe uh, Fallout 4 is on the top one hundred Steam charts and it was made in twenty fifteen. So <laughs> <laughs> it's an old game and it's still on there. So these games are great. So it would make sense for the Xbox to bring it under their umbrella. And add them to Game Pass, making it that much more appealing. And they actually did do that, what I said. <laughs> um, uh, actually, they just released this trailer where it's like a bunch of icons. What, what they said was, uh, I think they said, uh, Bethesda's iconic titles all in Game Pass or something, whatever it was. So... You know, it it was like I said, Fallout, 
uh, I think it was Fallout 4 or Fallout 76, both Dishonored titles. Um, That's all I can remember, but I'm sure there's there, there's got to be more. There's oh, and Prey. Mm -hmm. uh, Prey. Those were the big ones I could remember. You know, they're all on Game Pass now. So that was the first move they did, pretty much. And you know that they're that Xbox is going to do something about their upcoming titles. You know, you're talking about, uh, uh, what was the new death loop and Tokyo ghosts or whatever they called it. Ghost yes. Rider Tokyo. That's the name of the game. So those are their two out upcoming titles for Bethesda. So I can't wait to see what Xbox does with that. A lot of people are saying, uh, It'll be exclusive to Xbox and PC. You know, you can't get it on PS4 or PS5 mm -hmm. now. PlayStation, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you People are saying, oh, you're not going to be able to get Bethesda games on PlayStation anymore. I mean, I feel like they're going to use Bethesda to make some exclusives, but I don't think they're going to start saying, hey, all these Bethesda titles removed. I don't think they're going to do that. Banned. Gone. <laughs> Because first of all, it's really hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just technically. Because you gotta think of how many people actually have Fallout 4 installed onto their PlayStations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gotta be in the millions. But, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's going to be exciting that we're gonna see some, like, exclusives coming from Xbox that are actually good. Uh, barring <laughs> Halo and... I guess you could say Gears of War. I don't think Gears of War is awesome, but I don't think it's the greatest game. Is Forza exclusive? I don't think Forza is exclusive. I have no idea. If Forza, Forza is exclusive, then, I mean, that's pretty great. Forza is a racing game that those I'm initiated. But yeah, Forza is a pretty good racing game. And I don't like racing games. <laughs> because I'm bad at them. <laughs> um, So yeah. I'm very excited to see what they dream up there for in the way of exclusives. Be and it's very interesting because originally uh, they announced uh, Deathloop and Ghostwire at the beginning of I think it was last year. At the beginning of... Not the beginning of last year. It was E3 last year. They announced these two games. And they said originally that it was going to have a one-year exclusivity deal with PlayStation. So it was going to be on PlayStation for a year. Or PlayStation and PC for a year. And then it would come to Xbox. So I don't know if they're still going to honor that. Or if Xbox can or... Or will shut it down. I don't know if they actually can. Depends on the terms of the contract. This is my last, I guess, exclusively video game topic. All right. Uh, I know I'm kind of uh, uh, kind of suffocating you here, Jerry, with all the game. Ah, uh, it's all right, man. A lot of the viewers are probably gamers, so it's chill. <laughs> okay. Um. So I I I beat Bioshock, the first game. I bought the collection recently because it was off for an insane amount. I think you buy all three games. This is the collection too, so it's all games, all DLC, and the remastered versions for ten dollars. That's pretty good. So yeah, it, it's actually very good because normally it's somewhere around, I think seventy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, I mean, it's three games that are critically yeah. claimed. So, and their remastered versions and all the DLC. So yeah, you know. Yeah, that is pr that is a pretty good deal right there. So I beat the first Bioshock. Uh, I did the good ending for those wondering the uh the one where you save all the little sisters, and I liked the ending. Uh, all I'm gonna say about it without revealing too much because if you haven't played Bioshock and you want to, I don't want to reveal anything because it's actually a really incredible game. Uh, just the gameplay aspects alone, you know, you got these two different weapon types kind of centered around different systems in the game. You know, you got your actual weapons, you know, your guns. And, yeah, guns, grenade launchers, that sort of thing. And then you got your plasmids, which are basically like spells. 
and, and you switch between those two and they can interact and intermix with each other. It's very interesting to play. If you have that is cool. And yeah, so if you haven't played Bioshock, I won't reveal any anything about the story other than I like the ending. Uh and I'm curious to see what the evil playthrough is like. You know, the one where you uh kill all the little sisters, which is uh I can't imagine what that's like. Uh and in the way of upgrade points. Uh normally or not normally. The way that it's told to you that you know you could rescue these they're basically these creatures i don't know how to explain them without revealing too much but they are these creatures that collect a resource they need for upgrades in the game and they look like they're called little sisters because they look like girls like little girls with like these soulless dead eyes and like pale skin. And you know the the person who's talking to you, there's two people talking to you, and one of them's like, you know, somewhere in there there's a child, and then the other person's like, you know, don't do it, that's that's a lie. You know, those peop the mm-hmm. you know, those people are long the people they once were are long gone. So you have this choice as to whether you rescue them or kill them. So, yeah, for my first playthrough, I rescued all of them. And I got the good ending. It, it's apparently the good ending. I don't know, there's a secret multiple ending. But I wonder what happens if you actually kill them. Because, like, in the end, you're pretty much... You're still saving, but saving, uh, you know, the game's world. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if that's how it goes if you actually start killing these uh, little sisters. And basically the main argument is if you... They gather this resource, and if you rescue them, you get less of this resource. And what I notice when you actually play through the game is it doesn't matter that much. Because I didn't buy all the upgrades, but I'm, but I still had some leftover resource, or I didn't have any leftover resource. I spent it all, but when I spent all the resource, there was only a few upgrades left that I could pick from, and it might be because I picked up some collectibles along the way. I don't know how much it would be if you just went for that resource. Which, I don't know how... I, I'm pretty sure I'm making it obscure enough. But the mm-hmm. idea is if you kill them, you get more. I wasn't able to buy all the upgrades, but I got most of the upgrades. And it didn't really matter in the boss fight. I did in one go. Um, Like, I don't think the boss... The final boss fight. I don't think the final boss was that hard. Um, Yeah, just keep moving. <laughs> That's my tip for the final <laughs> boss. Uh, Just keep moving. Dodge, dodge his attacks. Um, yeah, I like the narrative of the game, you know, and the concept of the little sisters. I think the little sisters is the most interesting character in the game because they have this thing where it's like, uh, especially when you do the good ending, it's like, oh, you're saving them, you're saving these, uh, little little. They look like little girls, and. Mm-hmm. And, like, you feel really good about it, but then they do something morbid. (laughs) There's something totally (laughs) off the rails deranged. And you're like, are these human? Are these little sisters human? And you find out at the end that... What? uh, You find that out at the end, but uh, Mm -hmm. even at the end, you're not really that sure. But they're pretty much told this is what it is. But in that game, it's not... It's not sure because the person narrating it is biased. Anyway, mm-hmm. great game. I do recommend you play it. Uh, I don't think it's on sale anymore. Actually, I think the sale ends at the end of the week. Oh. So if you 
if you're on PC and you got Steam, uh, I do recommend you pick up the collection if it's still available on sale. I mean, these games are pretty old, so I don't think it's worth it playing uh, or paying top dollar for it. Steam's always bad about that, where they uh, sell games at, like, maximum price for so long. But yeah, that's my review of the game. My no-spoilers review of a many old game. I think it's an eight-year-old game. <laughs> uh, when did Bioshock come out? 2007. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah. It's a pretty old game pretty old that's a that's a classic right there yeah i played on the remastered version though so it mm -hmm. it wasn't it didn't feel like 2007 <laughs> uh yeah yeah so i i guess i got one more thing we're almost at the 50 right. minute mark i've been talking forever we are. I I'm I'm sorry that, that a lot of game news. You, it, a lot of game been news. There's a lot of game. A game lot stuff. of game. A lot of game. Big game, many of them. <laughs> uh, anyway, the the final thing I have that's slightly game related is that Extra Life United is coming up on April 23rd through the 25th, and registration opens on the 15th of March. Ooh. And ELU is this thing where. Normally it's in Orlando, and you know, with the COVID, that's not a thing. So they are having a, they're having Extra Life United online, and it's in associate it's in partnership with this. I think they're an esports company, from what I hear. Here it's a mm -hmm. DreamHack, and we there is five tournament games that are going to be played. I won't participate in all of them because. I'm not good at all of them, but it is Among Us, Chess, Fall Guys, Magic the Gathering, and Rocket League. So, uh, I don't, I don't place Fall Guys. I don't even own Fall Guys, um, and Rocket League. I'm terrible at. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna stick to if if I do this at all, <laughs> we're gonna stick with Magic, Chess, and Among Us. So we'll be, uh, if I choose to do this, we'll be, you know, you can tell me in the comments if you like, uh, you can head on over to the YouTube version of this if you're an audio listener and check and go on down to the comments and tell me, uh, are you interested in seeing Extra Life United content? Uh, if you do, I will probably be stream streaming all my practice related stuff over on Twitch. But it should be exciting. From what I hear, Extra Life United normally isn't like this. You know, it's normally like a convention. Uh, also, it will be interesting because there is also attached to this a cosplay and skateboard design competition. Uh, I'm not good at cosplay or skateboard design. I did have this cosplay idea, but I don't have the stuff to uh, make it. There's also a Minecraft competition. But that's not part of the tournament. I don't even know if I'll be participating in that with uh, participating in, what is it, three tournaments. I don't know yeah. if I'll be able to fit Minecraft in. I don't know if I'll even be able to fit all these in because we haven't got details yet. Registration opens in four days. Everyone on the Discord server is yelling, why? <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> uh, I know these things take a long time to prepare, and they probably don't have all the information, and that makes sense. And I'm okay with this. <laughs> but very exciting things coming up. Uh, other than the Bioshock thing, I'm doing that myself. That's in my off time. I I don't think I'll play through Bioshock on stream. <laughs> uh, do doesn't seem like a me thing. Mm. Uh, you know, with a game like that, it's very narrative driven. So I'm just like... right. Yeah, I should probably, like, do this myself. And it's also a uh, art style I'm very interested in, which is, you know, old-timey steampunk, high-tech magic, like, high-fantasy type stuff. And, you know, I'm just really into that. I do like that style of so, game. I mean, I'm, really being, I'm being selfish and 
keeping it to myself. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, sorry. Punch my mic. What is <laughs> your right. question? You can have an, un an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life. What is it? Oh, um, can it be money? It could be anything, but yes, I guess money would be the one. Because uh, that, that's the ultimate loophole, with. right? Ultimate supply, yeah, unlimited yeah. supply of money, which means I, I I can get anything I want. Although, wouldn't that devalue the money eventually if you put down like a bazillion dollars or something into something? Then like the dollar would become worth less. But I have an unlimited supply, so why do I care? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you put out more money, then the money you have will become worth less each time because you're adding more to the total amount of money. Yeah, in the is. economy. That would be yeah. interesting because how would that actually have an effect on the economy? Because it, it depends on how much you spend, normally, I guess. If I'm just spending normally, like how I normally mm -hmm. would, uh, like if I'm spending money normally, like it won't spend – it won't matter that much. Mm -hmm. But if but I'm if you're making like a lot of money extremely yeah. quickly, this money's coming from nowhere. <laughs> so Yeah, it's probably every gonna that dollar, might end every up Every dollar something. I put in is contributing to uh is contributing to the economy. I'm putting money from nowhere into the circulation. So mm -hmm. how does the US make up for this? We must have printed money and have no idea where it goes. I don't know. Uh, would, would it just inflate because we have there's more money that's what in circulation, I was thinking. right? Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was going for. for with that it was that <laughs> the, would be your weird. dollar would be if worth there was less more money in the. It you know, would be weird if there was more money in hmm. circulation than there was in than there was like they've made. Like, how does that work? Is that see that like most of the time when that happens, it's counterfeit money though. Like money right. that the government doesn't make is counterfeit. So would the U.S. Figure out that I'm the one spending all the money if I spend too much money and capture it and capture me because Bruh. for counterfeiting because I'm spending I mean, money that doesn't exist. Yeah, if it's money that doesn't exist, I guess it would be counterfeit. But like, but it's a real what money. If it isn't? Okay, that's a good question. They'd be like, how? If it's real money, the only source of real money is where it come is the government. It's the mint, right? Yeah. So did I steal but... money from the mint? Like uncirculated I don't know, dollars. There isn't. The thing is, there's no such thing as unlimited money. But you, you yourself have unlimited money, so you're gotta be pulling it from nowhere. Yeah. So, and it has to be valid, right, to be money. Yeah. So otherwise, it's just pretty paper. But if you have uncirculated bills, does that is it still real money? Because in that case, uncirculated money doesn't have. Like, it's it's basically counterfeit because if it's not in the system, but it's in the system at the same time, you've created this paradox <laughs> where it's oh, there's money boy. in circulation that shouldn't be there, but it's not out of circulation either. So, See, I what think what do? the government would do in that situation would probably just be to destroy the money and just reset how much money they have because of uh, the uh, circulation that they know yeah because of, of the uh, what's it called. Because, because the serial numbers on the dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the serial number, you run the serial serial number, and it doesn't have, and it's not in circulation. It's not uncirculated either. It's not like in the, it it's not like you mm -hmm. can't find that dollar in the mint. So it's not like a copy. It's money that's just, I guess it's just money that's being printed, but it's not on the books. I I don't know how. That? The normal mortals that don't have infinite money can <laughs> comprehend that. <laughs> now, the thing is, like, what if when you use the money that, that you have, if when they did check the book, it did find that, like, s through some means, <laughs> it just... did become mint, and, like, the serial code was valid. <laughs> yeah, but then there's people, you know, people that do the spreadsheets and stuff. How do they... I'm assuming it's like, you know how the monkey's paw, you know, it just does things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just does the thing. No questions asked. Oh, I mean, questions asked. 
but <laughs> no, no questions asked for the monkey's paw. Yeah, but it but it does it in a bad way. There's every time you use the that, monkey's paw, that's because it, comes it out does it a re- in a realistic way. So mm-hmm. if it's giving me infinite money, how does that work? Does that mean that? I don't think it would be truly infinite. I think it would be an amount of money you would never be able to spend in, like, ever. Like, an extreme amount of money. Or someone keeps paying me money for as long as I live. It could be that, too. Because of things that happen. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like anytime you need money, you just happen to have it. Something right. like that. So it's like, I have this money, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I spent all my money. Uh, well, I have and more. I, I'm thinking, oh, I have the desire to buy this thing. And then somebody mm-hmm. comes to my door and says, uh, or somebody comes to my door and it's like, uh, it, this is a really morbid thought, but let's say like my dad jo- died on a job or something, and I got his life yeah. insurance. <laughs> Yeah, because that's how it worked in um in the actual monkey's paw yeah, story. Yeah, in the story. Mm-hmm. So, so it's like, oh, now I have all this money. So it's unlimited, but it's because of mm-hmm. things that make sense that it's, keep happening. It's not like you have an infinite well of money. It's yeah. that you always have money when you need it. I guess. I mean, that would circumvent the, the uh, the whole. Infinite money thing. Oh, but infinite we've money distra- thing we've demonstrated that. that. The, the paradox. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's but we've like, demonstrated like that that things. is a paradox. Yeah, like I could win the lottery. I could mm-hmm. you know, do things like that. Things that actually make sense. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> infinite money. Being is how money works, I don't think it's quite possible. But it was an interesting choice. I mean, it could work. I would just keep earning money from realistic sources. Right. I would be an incredibly lucky person and just win the lottery every time I went for it. That sort of thing. You invest in all of the stocks that just happen to go. Yeah, like, I invest blow in up. all the stocks that happen to blow up. You know, things like that. Mm-hmm. It's not technically infinite money. Like, I don't look at my bank account and it just has a big infinity symbol. <laughs> but. Yeah. But uh, it's the closest you could get to that. Realistically. Mm-hmm. And it would just never run out, you know. The moment, right. the moment my bank account gets zero, it gets refilled back up again by something. You know, by something some means, out. yeah. So mm-hmm. that was you... an interesting uh, one, though. Right. But mine, I think mine is more simple. But I, I could imagine we'd find some way of ruining. I'd, I'd want an <laughs> infinite tea bottle. It's just. Infinite Every time it's tea. empty, it just. I love tea. All right, I want tea. <laughs> I do. I do. You know, I do know this. Mhm. I do quite love my tea. You know, every every, um, every time you come for D and D, it's. Two, I have a. Tea. Uh, I have a. a mm-hmm. You have two bottles of pure leaf tea. Yeah, and that's the exact brand I would right. want an infinite supply of pure leaf <laughs> sweet tea. Pure leaf sweet tea. This, this video is not sponsored, but. I love pure leaf sweet tea yeah. so much, and I would love just an infinite bottle of it that never runs out. I'd would, be so happy. I would love pure leaf sweet tea. Um, I yeah. I do like pure leaf tea. Um, mm. I also like the. Do they make the green tea? The one I buy, I think so. Also, like their hibiscus tea. Yes, that one's pretty good. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the green tea I buy? I either buy Arizona or this other brand. I can't remember. I think it's Pure Leaf. I can't remember though. I if Pure Leaf makes green tea, I haven't seen it or tried it. Yeah, I I don't know. What do I buy? Now I'm wondering. I don't know. We'll figure it out. One day. Next next time I go to the store, I'll let you know. All right, that'll be cool. <laughs> We'll we'll let you know in the next episode of the podcast. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll I'll update the cast. <laughs> Just in the description, all caps. It's <laughs> it's this brand of tea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so I have a wait. Question. You didn't have a question. Okay, there you I go. I have a question. What What's your question? 
what does the normal day in the life look for Jerry? Like realistically, like currently, it's or like, you mean what I would like, like it right to be? Around, like currently, it's like what what around time you get up? What do you do? Let's see. You know what do you around, what well, do you like, like for breakfast? Days. That sort of thing. You assume I eat breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um. But no, uh, let's see. This morning I got up 6.15 because I had to go to school in person today. But most days, uh, most weekdays, I'll get up around 7.40-ish. That's when class then weekends. starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wake up just before class starts. Um, and then on weekends, I usually sleep in to an indeterminate amount of time. Uh, it's a, it up. varies. Just when I yeah I wake up when I wake up on the weekends unless I have plans that day. Um, let's see. From there, I do sometimes eat breakfast. It's usually like a cereal or something like that. Um, what do I do after that? Well, weekdays school. Um, I, I do that for for the the amount of time that school lasts. I do believe what seven hours or so. I don't yeah. know. It's usually six, ends six around and a half, seven hours, depending on six to half to what you're doing after, you know, if you got some yeah. extra work. After school activities and such. Um, and then from there, I usually check the mail. I walk down to check the mail about half an hour after school ends or soon after I get back from school if I went in person that day. And then... I don't do a whole lot. Sometimes uh, we have a pond nearby in our local woods, and I like to walk down to there uh, most days, especially today. I went down today because the weather was really nice. Ponds and are cool. I just wanted to check in it. Yes, ponds are really cool. It was nice down there. There was a few, I do believe, mallard ducks. Ooh. I hadn't seen those. Bef- I don't think I've ever seen ducks in, in there. We've pond. had geese, but yeah, I, they sounded like ducks. They looked like ducks. So I'm assuming they were ducks. I just um, remember mm-hmm. whenever I think of mallard ducks, I always think of the decoy museum in uh in that town just over the bridge. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Decoy? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> decoy museum? Yeah, there's a decoy museum. Just look it up on maps, you'll see it. I have never heard of this. Is this close by yeah, to where close. we are? It's right over the bridge. To go the... to that one place. Okay, cut the bit right now because I need to actually know <laughs> what you're talking about. Like, like, what? We'll cut this out. But where is it? <laughs> okay, so it's. Uh, it's. All right. Okay, you get that. <laughs> I got that, but. So. It... Have we been there? I've been there. Because my grandparents oh. live there. Okay. And Let's say, I don't think I've ever even heard of it. Uh, yeah, the de- there's a decoy museum there. It's pretty small. But the huh. thing about that town is that that's what they're known for. <laughs> Decoys, oh, that's well, like I guess thing. I don't know that town. Yeah, that's like a... Uh, uh, that's like... I, I don't want to say it's major manufacturing, but it's like mm-hmm. it's like something that... There's like decoy enthusiasts there. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, decoy enthusiasts. You mean like people who use decoys for hunting or something? No, like or just like people who collect know, like, them. Collecting. So, so you know, like wooden ducks. Those are called decoys. I know that, but I've only ever seen them used for hunting or like, yeah, hunting. Yeah, people collect them. That's interesting. Yeah, you didn't know that. I didn't know that. No, I've like, only ever seen people who hunt go, with them. I go to my, That's it. my grandparents' house and my uh, and my, and, and my grandfather's brother's uh, mm-hmm. house and office. His office has a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, he's like a retailer, retail agent. And his office ah. is like, wall. all the walls are either covered in old photographs of what the town looked like. Um. Mm-hmm. There's some of the horse races, uh, some old maps, and there's decoys just everywhere. Wow. See, I know people who keep, like, taxidermy animals, like, but no, I didn't know 
collecting decoys. That's that's interesting. It's a thing. Yeah. Like like you I go, guess there's probably someone who collects like everything. Like, like there's probably in the, I don't know everything if, that can be collected. I don't know if it's because it's just the old people that I see there because like those are my grandparents, so I see them, their mm-hmm. friends, uh you know, my my mom's brothers and sisters. Cause they're like mm-hmm. from there, and, and every house I go into, it's just decoys. There's there's one. There's at least one. <laughs> wow, I that's swear really there's... intriguing to me. Like whether it's like in the windowsill, uh, you know, maybe it's not even a decoy. It's either a decoy or like some bird shaped thing where it's like, where it's like a a common decoration I see is it's like a swan. Except there's okay. like a flower pot in the middle of where the wings. Oh, I know that thing. I do yeah. know that. Yeah, that's like a common decoration. Uh, uh, <coughs> pe- Excuse a me. A lot of people have that decoration, but it's very prevalent mm-hmm. in that town. <laughs> wow. It's a very historic town too. All right. Yeah, I've I've never heard of this area or this place. It's, wow. <laughs> Decoy museum. I man. I have to go now. I have to go now. <laughs> It, uh, once my uh, provisional license is up, I can take you there. That would be really great. That would be. You, you didn't see it, but I did finger guns there. It's very awkward. <laughs> I do finger guns a lot. That's nice. Finger guns. Finger guns. Pew pew. Bang bang. So yeah, <laughs> kind of went yeah. on a tangent there. Yeah, we did. I forgot where we had left off before. Um, left that. off on ducks. Oh, ponds. Yes, ponds. ducks in a pond. <laughs> Yeah, so I saw some ducks in a pond today, and uh, I went for a walk in the woods, and yeah, and I came home and didn't really do a whole lot. Um, I did, I did open up my sketchbook because sometimes, uh, the past few days I've been drawing a lot recently for um, uh, mainly the D and D campaign that I uh, told you about in the Scrubbed cast. Um, I like I've been that name better than, stuff than what I was doing when I was calling it. What did you call it? I thought you called it scrubbed cast. Uh, oh, did I call it scrubbed? Oh no, I don't you know. just what say you, it What better. did you think you called it? Okay. <laughs> I, I think I, All right. I, I think I I think I just think you say it better. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. But um but yeah, we talked about it last um in the scrubbed cast that um that I've been working on some stuff for our campaign. Um it's not anything that's going to happen immediately. It's more lo- on farther down the line, but it is stuff that's eventually going to be very big and important in the campaign. And uh, I hope you all enjoy it, because it, it's def- it, you can tell it was written by me, I'll tell you that. But, um... <laughs> um Ooh, my display went out. Did it just go to sleep? Oh, no, did it? It went to sleep. There it goes, it's back. Aw, it's a beefy. It's because I wasn't doing but, anything. Uh, Alright. Display went to sleep. <laughs> but, um, yeah... In the in the past few days, that's mainly what I've been working on and stuff like that, and then just drawing just to draw because I've been enjoying the things I've been drawing recently. It's just been really fun. Well, that's good. I tried the drawing thing mm-hmm. once, it didn't work. Oh. Like like literally the first project I did in there, and I looked at it, I was like, because she was giving us some tips and tricks, you know, because it's a drawing, yeah, a drawing class, and mm-hmm. I looked at it, and I go, I think I did pretty good. And then I get mm-hmm. the grade back, and it's a D. <laughs> oh. So from the beginning, I was just kind of crushed in that mm-hmm. class, and and she kept telling us, you know, you can transfer. Like, is you know, this oh. isn't for you. If you're not, if you oh. don't like this class, you can leave. <laughs> and I feel like she was talking to me, but I I, I stayed oh. with it. You know, I uh, I didn't have any friends in that class. <laughs> but, oh. Uh, well, that's just because... God, I hate those kind of classes. You know, the, some classes are like that. My freshman year was just those classes. Aw. I had I one that. friend in gym, and it was your brother, and that was yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It was still a fun year, though. I met some new people. It was all right. Yeah, that that's the good thing about freshman year, because everyone, everyone's just kind of mm-hmm. scattered. You can yeah. just kind of... You can make friends easier. But not easier. I just met more people. Well, you meet more people. Whatever. You, yeah. you know what I mean. Making friends is you hard, make, Taylor. You make we more, are nerds. You make more friends freshman year than you do in your later Anywhere years, else, just yeah. in general. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't think I've made any new friends since then. <laughs> All my friends I made in freshman year are the friends I've stuck with. Did I make any friends? I, I Wait, I that's not true because School of Tech. Um, yeah. I've I've met I've met friends there, plenty of friends. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I guess I guess now it's just like you don't really mm -hmm. make friends; you network. <laughs> mm -hmm. More networking. <laughs> networking. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That that I'm sure like once college starts I'll start making friends there. Cause that'll that'll mm -hmm. be a place where I don't know everyone. Because that's yeah. the thing about like living in these smaller towns is you know everyone. I but don't. When... I hardly know anyone here. Yeah, I no, there's like knowing someone and then there's like being your friend. I'm talking about like knowing people. Like you see them around. I still don't know a lot of the people here. <laughs> I do see people occasionally, but occasionally the people I see are just the people from school. Well, and that's it. I work at the local grocery store, so it's like I see the people that I see mm -hmm. all the time. I'm like, hey, yeah. look, it's that person. Some people I don't have names, I just have that brown person. hair girl. <laughs> And I kind of, like, judge their personality, but I don't say it, and I don't act upon what I think their judgment is. Like, it, mm -hmm. it's just like, hey, I'm looking at them, and based on what they said to that one guy, I think, they, I think they're pretty full of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> or something like that. And, of course, uh -huh. that's always negative. We're talking about intrusive thoughts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thought is always negative. <laughs> well, I never look at someone at first glance and go, you know, they're probably a really nice guy. <laughs> now I'm like, I do that sometimes. There's some people I look at. I'm like, how can they be mean? How? Well, that's after looking at them for a while. Like at first, you're like, I don't know. For me, sometimes it's most of the time it's, oh, they seem nice. <laughs> am that I just that the, is actually my first thought. Am I just the uh... <laughs> the pessimist? <laughs> pessimist negative nancy maybe i don't know maybe <laughs> there are some people you look at them and you're like hmm, i wonder but like for me no most of the time i meet someone new i'm like all right they seem friendly enough maybe yeah maybe i'm just maybe i'm just a mean spirited person <laughs> <laughs> i guess maybe man i'm, I'm, that, I'm that one angry janitor in the corner i don't have angry janitors <laughs> The janitor. Yeah, plays I was about to say the janitors at our school are pretty nice. The janitor played magic with me. <laughs> me, me and uh, yeah. our uh, buddy Logan. I can use first names, right? That doesn't identify the person, right? Yeah. There's plenty of Logan up there. There's plenty of Logans. It's mm -hmm. not a unique name. I know at least three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. Four. Yeah. Yeah, four. Five? I know four. Uh, no, I know four. <laughs> five. <laughs> I don't know five. I know five Logans. <laughs> wow, you've out-Loganed me. How yeah, dare you? indeed. Uh, I do know five. That one from that one movie. Oh, by the right. same name. By the same name, Logan. <laughs> Logan. Oh, there you go. There we go. Now we're I tied know. now. Now we're tied. We're tied in the. Unless loading. that was another one for you, in which case you're now at six. <laughs> bait. <laughs> Just like bait. There's a sixth one. <laughs> no, <that didn't. laughs> I know I was. I was thinking of something. I don't. I don't, I'm not sure if it was a movie. It might have been a character, but not a movie. I was like, mm. yeah, I probably know five Logans. I don't know, but that number just came up. I know for sure that I know four. <laughs> I know, I I know four actual people named Logan. Yeah, four actual people, like I actual living people, <laughs> right? Well, I, I I can't say living. I don't know, but four Oof. people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. just Logan and I. We 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 played magic with the janitor. So janitor, our janitors are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like. I, I remember when he asked me that too, because he comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, do you want to play magic with the janitor?" I go, "Uh, it's it's like I at first I was confused about how that would work." Mhm. Mm and he was like, "Oh, just um, media center uh, 
at, when school's over. And I'm like, oh, you can do that. <laughs> That's right. You can actually go to the place where you read books. Wow. Well, you can't now. Well, you can't but... now. But I'm talking about back no. then. And we did yeah, that. And that was that fun. Happened. And I, and I almost, I almost lost to uh, the janitor who I won't reveal his name. But uh, mm. but I almost lost to him because he had this deck, and it was a very interesting deck. Uh, he's been collecting for quite some time. He showed us his collection. He's got mm-hmm. a ton of deck sets. Like you, you, like he had them like on a cart where he had all these deck sets, and he was like, he, and he was like, this one's, and, and he showed us this one deck, and he goes, this one's for my wife because she likes squirrels. And it's a deck comprised of tar- entirely of squirrel related cards. Oh, so there was that. And then I he like had that. this deck That's... that basically, for those Magic fans out there, I'm I'm not sure about the cards specifically, mm-hmm. but it's the thing that once you get it running, you have infinite mana. How? Uh, it's the the series of three cards where it's like add one colorless. And then there was like spend one to untap a land, and then there was like reduce cost of card minus one, so it was free, and to untap it, so you could just tap it as many times. Oh wow! That's... And you could just summon. That's breaking the game, isn't it? it you is. won at that point. Yeah. So you could just summon any card. Oh man, that's really powerful. It's expensive to get running though. I forget what it was, but it was you needed multiple manas to actually cast those cards. So no. you had to get the mana. And the cost was destroying lands. So you needed mm-hmm. the cost of the land and then some so you could destroy the lands to activate the card and still have enough lands to spend on it. Mm-hmm. So at that point you have infinite land, but what happened was since this was a triple battle, uh, I was using my life drain deck, which oh, is this okay. very powerful. You played against it. It's my uh my dark and light mm-hmm. deck. Yeah, where, yeah. Where it's just a lot of things have life link. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it, like it's centered around life link, and uh, I think there's some haste cards in there. Is like mm-hmm. some Horus Legion cards, and uh, so like red, white, and mm-hmm. and it's centered around that sort of thing. So when I cast these cards, uh, I basically drained Logan, and by the time I drained him and got it to a one v one, I had thirty two mm-hmm. health to his. I think 19 or something like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because that's what the deck is. It's get massive amounts of health. <laughs> so I remember one time. So I, I had a situation like that. I drained him and took his that's life <laughs> and used it against the generator to basically outplay that's him. That's amazing. <laughs> I remember one time I had an experience like that where we both, I, all players involved, ended up with somewhere around 70 health. I have no idea how we got there. I have no idea what happened, but it was quite insane. Life link. It's insane. It must have been that because Life I don't see how it And was. I guess green cards just heal you. It's like green and blue mm-hmm. cards have cards that can just yeah. heal you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Magic is a fun it's game. Insane, man. It is. I want to play more of it. I'm hoping, uh, like we said in... um the podcast before the this draft. one and scrubbed cast the draft i can't wait to do that i'm really excited for it the, the post-covid draft i really hope we actually get there and also, and i hope we get people on board for it also elu i get to do uh mm-hmm. i get to play uh magic on elu so i can start practicing oh. that good yeah i uh, once the rules come mm-hmm. out though i'll have to check because it could be like a closed tournament where they allow historic cards, which 
in the digital version of the game, there's like these historic cards, which basically phase out old series. So they do this constant rotation of series in in the Extra Life, or not Extra Life, uh, Magic the Gathering series. So they like, so it's like some, th- some series will become historic. So it's like, as it goes around, like during the seasons, as the seasons mm-hmm. go by. So it's like, a rotation of card sets. So I'll have to look at the rules where it's like you can do historic mm-hmm. cards, non historic cards, or it's like these cards are banned, certain things. I might do my mm-hmm. dark light deck, which I think I can do. I think it only has a few oh. custom cards and mm-hmm. since I never use wild cards, which is basically this thing where it's like while well, you open packs in the game you get wild cards where you can just make any card. <laughs> so so uh maybe I'll just end up doing there that where it's uh I can make a cr- exact copy of my my deck in real life. Mm-hmm. Because it's a powerful deck. <laughs> like like yeah. I said, I just drain someone and annihilate another person. It's it's great. That is really cool. That's how you want to play right there. Yeah. I I I love my black white decks. I was gonna make one once. I was so tempted, but instead I made Rakdos. <laughs> I do like Rakdos as well. Uh, it yeah, it's does cool. have lifelink elements, but mm-hmm. what I like to use Rakdos for is I use it for a haste deck. Mm-hmm. So you know, low cost low cost cards that can attack on the first turn. So those are good. So just extremely fast, summon as many cards as possible, get them on the field, you know. Just full out attack, just full annihilate attack. your opponent before they can fight back. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and I like to do that because the black cards can be support while your red cards can be your attack. So, mm-hmm. so you can put black sorcery cards in, you know, once that, like, lets you destroy cards on the enemy side, you know, do lifelink, uh, debuff enemy cards, things like that. So that's what I like to use it for. Yeah. And like I said, with red, (laughs) haste. Make a haste deck. I might just go full meme and do a haste deck (laughs) for (laughs) ELU. Do it. That'd be funny. Full, full meme, just haste everything. Speed running magic. Speed, Speed running, running magic. magic. Any percent, no glitch. <laughs> I don't know. We'll play around with it and figure it out. I also just love... That would be fun. <laughs> I love Boris Legion because... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, white, white cards are very good. I yes. Think, I think they're the best color yeah. in the magic mm-hmm. game. <laughs> yeah, they are really good. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I'm sure there's people who play Magic. It's like blue supremacy. Because... <laughs> blue supremacy. I had a blue white deck. I forgot what the guild was called, but I had one. I still uh, have one somewhere. Azorus. <laughs> ah, yes, that's what it is. Az- I am the Senate. Azor- I am the Senate. You're right. I always said that. The Azorus. Um, when Senate. I played that deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, that was a fun deck. Blue white. Mm-hmm. Um. Blue white. That's just blue is good for canceling everything. Yeah, negate everything. <laughs> just know you. And people do love doing that. I love that, yeah. And I hate it. I feel like it's anti fun. <laughs> <laughs> At least for me it's anti fun because like I'm trying you don't to like cast counter spells spell. here. I don't want count <laughs> I don't want to get hit with counter spells. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the new uh constellation mechanic I, I i mean i can't call it new at this point but uh i don't know anything about it <laughs> basically it's about like i think it's using uh what is it oh right it's like constellation is like uh if it's it's about casting with enchantments i forget what it is it's like you have to cast it on an enchantment creature, which is a new creature type in that set, mm-hmm. where where creatures also double as enchantments. Okay. So, 
and I think I I think that's what it is when you cast an enchantment creature. But there's like on, this just... thing. Uh -huh. I forget what the mechanic is, but basically, it lowers the cost of. It's like a, it's like a lowered cost version if you have the set, and actually do mm -hmm. it with enchantment creatures. It's a lower cost version of counterspell. <laughs> I do have enchantment creatures. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I I I bought, I, I think I bought a set, mm -hmm. or not not a set, a uh, pack. No, it was two mm -hmm. packs. I bought two packs. Yeah, I just reached over to my deck because I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have enchantment creatures. Yeah, when yeah, it, when I've that came out, it was like, that's a pretty cool mechanic because I was able to try it in mm -hmm. Arena because that's the great thing about Arena mm -hmm. existing is if you log on when they rotate the sets, they give you like a few free packs to open. Mm. So, um, <laughs> we talk, so we talked about magic for 30 minutes. We did. It's been yeah. fun. <laughs> We're an hour and a half. Um, I didn't talk we about are. my day, it's... about my, my oh, no, you day didn't. in the life. Um, day in the life. Yeah. I, I don't want this to reach two hours. <laughs> it won't. Just, let's just cut it quick. Just answer it. Get it over okay. with. <laughs> so, day in the life. I wake up uh, somewhere around seven. Uh, this is during a school week. Uh, mm -hmm. Weekend, I just wake up whenever, unless I have to go to work. Um, make breakfast. My favorite breakfast to make is a breakfast sandwich with bacon and egg and cheese. And That's really it's either good. on a pretzel bun or an English muffin. Ooh. That's my favorite thing to make. Uh, get a cup of coffee. Uh, drink my coffee while I'm in first period. Get out of first period. Uh... You know, do the rest of my stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Do any school work that's extra. And then I'm off for the rest of the day. I I either go to work if I have to. Or I do some gaming. Uh, sometimes I go for walks. Like yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I go on errands. You know, just day-to-day day -day adult stuff. Like, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I had to do some of that stuff. Not all of it. My mom mm -hmm. still buys the groceries. But anything else I want to get, I have to get it. You know, if I want it. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. I just checked. I have three enchantment creatures in this deck. <laughs> See, now I'm curious as to what that constellation mechanic is. Because... It's forever yeah. ago. I'll I'll look into it after this. Uh, yeah. We call. we look at it later. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's time to end the podcast. Yeah, this is quite a long one. This Which is longer one? than Scrubcast. Yeah, this is longer than Scrubcast because we added on a couple topics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, I like to thank you all for listening, mm -hmm. wherever you may listen. Uh, you can check out my Twitch page or my YouTube page for more content. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. Hit the like. You know, support for this podcast is always great in the form of likes, follows. You know, adding what the podcast. You? It's it's mm -hmm. it's always great. You know, especially with podcasts because podcasts they kind of spread similar to music. I mm -hmm. think in some ways. Because they're audio. Because they're mm -hmm. audio. It's like I want something to listen to. And people are like, here's something for your ears. And so support for this podcast is always great. You know, like shares, you know, share this with a friend. If you think they'll like it, we kind of talk about random stuff. <laughs> Most of the time it's gaming and Jerry has no idea because he's not a digital gamer. A tabletop I'm not a gamer. gamer. I do like my tabletop games. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I do hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, check out those pages, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, you know the deal. Once again... I almost won't comment that you said Tweeter. Tweeter. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for listening, and I'll see you next time. Farewell. And Jerry will see you next time. You know, he's also yeah. here. Yeah, I'm here. It's... For now. 
no, say say bye to the viewers, Jerry, or the or the bye. listeners. See you next time. See bye. you next time. Bye. Farewell.